So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the CEC 14. It's a privilege and a pleasure to see so many of you gathered together for this first international transdisciplinary conference on the many issues which are subsumed under the umbrella term climate engineering. Climate engineering is a scary thing that we need to learn more about. It's a human problem that involves the whole biosphere. It's a deliberate tinkering with the climate system, um, and that's distasteful to a lot of people. It's a crazy but perhaps inevitable option. Climate change poses enormous risks to many people around the world. Um, it's clear that we have to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases globally, and it's clear that we have to adapt to environmental changes. Now, more recently, some people have suggested that we should also look at geoengineering as a way to maybe alleviate some of the risks of global warming. Climate engineering approaches have typically been divided into two categories. One is solar geoengineering, or SRM, the idea of reflecting sunlight to space to offset greenhouse gas warming. And the other approach is commonly known as carbon dioxide removal, or CDR, which attempts to remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. If we have a situation where you have countries that are desperate to do something to save their people, you have leaders who are desperate to do something to protect their economies, this is precisely the kind of solution, the kind of fix that they'll grab for, because it looks like it might help. What if we get it wrong? What if something happens that we don't expect? What are the relevant international frameworks for climate engineering. I wonder if uh, scientists working on geoengineering will at some point be drawn into a new uh, military industrial university complex. The best way forward is to actually reduce energy consumption in a major way. We can decry the fact that uh, we know there's a problem and we're not acting appropriately, but it is a fact. What are you doing in Germany? to implement a new energy structure. That is decreasing CO2, then I don't need climate engineering. Shouldn't we immediately switch to the better solution, which is a trend, namely transforming our energy system towards renewables? How society is going to understand it? How will it be transparent? How will it be governed? And how will uh, people engage with the idea of doing the research, the reason the research is being done, the outcomes of the research. I'm a citizen of Tuvalu, a country five meters above sea level. And I think our voices and thoughts should be also considered when it comes to decision making. I think it's important to really bridge the, the communication between the scientists and people involved in other practices like the policy and the communication side. The goal of this conference is to provide a platform for the many different views that people have on climate engineering to engage in what we've now called critical global discussions. This will be an intensely interactive session. How do we balance this need to do something to protect ourselves, to protect the planet, protect human civilization, and the potential for 
unimaginable catastrophe if we make a mistake. Research will discover both the benefits and the risks. We may, by doing research, discover how dangerous it is and be much less likely to do it after we do research. We have a serious, very serious problem, and there's no question we do. But framing in this, you know, in terms of we have this very serious emergency and the scientists are going to measure everything just so and come up with a solution for it. Um, whereas, you know, there are people with real livelihoods out there whose, you know, lands are affected, whose uh, rights are affected. We know so little compared to what we need to know. So climate engineering is complex, that I can agree. <laughs>